Last time we uh, completed the path integral formula and this time I will demonstrate some of its uses and uh, the whole direction of this is that we are going towards the functional formulation of uh, quantum field theory. So <coughs> just to explain. Um, so we can now outline a bit of philosophy of the course. Um, what we want to do is introduce QFT. And in it, <coughs> show how to derive a Green's functions. So the most important point is that um, the most important use of path integral is really as a um, generating functional of the formulae relating Green's functions. This is somewhat important because uh, after investing so much time studying path integral you might ask what is the use because no chemist ever needs a path integral, no nuclear physicist uses a path integral, no particle physicist uses a path integral. Okay? Particle physicists uh, can derive Feynman diagrams for what is called evolution operator the Dyson method of deriving. So what are path integrals good for? The simple answer is they are good for amusement. However, if you promote them to fields, fields and instead of paths you are then dealing with integrals over configurations of all possible fields, then it becomes a very powerful tool and that is what we are going to call the functional integral. So the functional integral is simply a generalization of the path integral. And the main use of it is then it is a powerful method to derive relationships or results dealing with Green's functions. Okay? And we can derive one of the most important thing we can derive is effective potential. So derive Or let me just say define um, effective action. So these are the things 
for which the functional method is useful. And just as a preview uh, like a trailer of things to come, we had this formula for uh, what did we call it XFTF XITI and quite importantly not to forget although it is never written in any books that is what it is. that is what the path integral formula is. The functional integral is Actually at that point there is not much point putting but okay we can put okay. of course it is between Dirac picture states equal to and now we write a um, right. So here note that the integral over x is over this is integral over all the paths. So all the paths that start at x i t i and terminate at x f t f but then over the entire possible phase space and you remember that all these curly things have all the legal definitions in terms of some square root 2 pi h crosses and all that has gone below. So, it is defined like that and in the limit that n goes to infinity. Here we simply with a great flourish write this. where this capital pi is conjugate variable of phi. So, exactly same formula except that now it will be a density and it is d4x and from xftf xiti to xftf okay so we this is what we are going to do we are going to expand extend the idea of things along paths eventually it is integrations over entire field configurations in the functional space Okay. Uh, there is another thing I wanted to say which is the tying up of um, the Fock Dirac quantization for the weak field system. Dirac uh, quantum theory of weakly coupled systems. Mm. 
goes over to quantum field theory of space time fields. So, here which uses A of some what had we written some uh, quantum numbers can be transformed into QFT of space time fields. with some indices okay so let me just write lorentz index because i love to start talking mu nu all that so for the time being it's not important what mu nu you put there but it's a into qft of space time fields which is lorentz covariant So, what does all this mean? It means if you open a standard textbook of quantum field theory, one standard one and which is nice to read is book by Ryder which we have not referred to. Uh, he will start directly with these, okay, with this field theory. But the point is that there is a connection, but that approach is uh, actually just tells you let us quantize fields or as motivation it will say well put oscillators at every point in space time and now put some uh, couple by spring then in the lim continuum limit it looks like uh, uh, fields with derivatives because nearby string, uh, springs are coupled. But then you ask why are there springs at every point in space time. So, there is no real uh, ab initio motivation of where those fields come from. The really the fields come from here which is simply as we proved a consequence of the Fermi or Dirac statistics and if you try to build up the theories of uh, those then you can introduce this A dagger operators because those states are labeled by purely number it does not matter which particle is in which single particle quantum state just how many particles there are in a particular quantum number state and so that allows you to introduce this commuting or anti commuting operators and then there is this can be transformed to is a slightly long story uh, which most people skip because it is somewhat technical and then they simply write Lorentz covariant fields scalar, spinner, the vector field, you know four vector field and so on. But actually this connection is the big one and uh, from uh, uh, systematic point of view why we should construct Lorentz covariant fields and not just deal with a, a dagger. We wrote a particular interaction potential you remember with some some particles being created some being destroyed and then some v of uh, all the qu that thing is very cumbersome because you cannot guarantee that there is momentum conservation energy conservation charge conservation and all the quantum numbers involved and lorentz in whatever space time invariance therefore it is much better to use these now people just use these and find that it is a nice thing to do but the this con connection is what is a uh, rather a technical one and that is the content of Weinberg volume 1. So, Weinberg volume 1 
and <coughs> spin so s starting with this it is necessary to or the convenient thing to use are the space time fields For uh, <coughs> so let me say this much. It is convenient to use causal space-time fields. By causal is meant some linear combination of a and a dagger. You must have done in quantum three a e raised to minus i omega t plus i k dot x plus a dagger e raised to plus i omega t i. So you split the positive frequency and negative frequency parts and so on. That is what we call a causal field. And if you construct this causal field. Then that will ensure. So let me just say, causal means, for example, no. So you have to assemble in this particular way and it is only d 3 k and omega is square root omega k square root of k squared plus m squared. That is what is meant by causal field similarly expansion for Dirac field for Maxwell field and so on. So starting with this it is convenient to use these. And why is it convenient? Because this is what ensures and now get ready for the big uh, content of the theorem. The statement is that if you use causal fields So it <coughs> obeys locality, causality. So this is uh, using covariant local Lagrangians, okay. local Lagrangian densities. So locality, causality, analyticity. and cluster decomposition. This is the way I remember it, but to say it more simply one should, uh, so causality basically is uh, this Lorentz covariance that influences propagate only inside the light cone 
uh, the, there are there are effects outside light cone also, but it is a covari Lorentz covariant description. Uh, locality means that you do not get actions at a distance, uh, and so and that would also violate Lorentz invariance. So it should be local, and uh, unitarity is part of the causality statement in a way. Analyticity is something else, but that has to do with uh, also giving these causal answers, causal and unitary answers. The last thing is this cluster decomposition, which is a complement to the locality part, because cluster decomposition means that if I have some uh, five particles interacting and seven coming out, but if I begin to separate out a group of two of them say 2 going into 3 and uh, 3 going into 4 or whatever. If I separate out some clusters, then effectively their asymmetric elements will factorize. That process becomes independent of this process. So that is sort of global locality, global implication of locality that if you really move these things apart, then they are not mutually interacting, which then allows you to focus on local physics at a time. You do not, when you do experiment in Geneva you do not have to worry about what is happening in Japan. So that has to do with uh, this cluster decomposition that experiments that are far apart are not going to influence each other. So all of these properties are necessarily and sufficiently obtained if you use the causal fields and the causal fields ultimately can be constructed out of these the Fock Dirac construction and this is the real physical basis of quantum field theory. However, you will find people who say, so why worry about all these A's and A daggers and so on, just start with some fields, some space time fields. And in fact, we know that there are, uh, so here the S matrix becomes a crucial uh, ingredient that we are only concerned about S matrix to be obtained from field theory from this quantum physics. But there are non S matrix uh, things that we require from uh, quantum field theory. There are for example, bound states. So, how do you compute bound states out of their ingredients? Well, the answer is in relativistic physics, we do not have very good methods at present. There are this so called uh, um, it goes by the name of beta ansatz and so on to obtain bound states, but I do not think they have been very successful. So, otherwise the nuclear bound states would have been calculated from quarks by now, they have not been. So, there are questions that are not answered by the S matrix, but there they can still be described in terms of causal fields. So, the causal field framework seems to be more powerful then just this necessary sufficient uh, requirement for the S matrix and this is why field theory remains of great interest. QFT seems to <coughs> okay, but quarks and gluons are reasonably well described. Okay. Good. 
Good, so, so much by way of the philosophy of the course and I waited till the third lecture to tell. So, now we just come back, so I waited till the third lecture to lay this out because at least now we have seen the path integral and uh, the Fock Dirac quantization, so you know what we are talking about. And as, as you also know that it is only after the initial credits roll by that the movie starts, right. So, so, now we plunge back into the path integral and learn how to do some calculation with it. Uh, 